this knob do? No one had to properly atone for anything back then. What is up everybody, Opti here again in this second installment of our advanced lighting tutorials. This entire video we're going to be focusing on the light underscore dynamic entity in Hammer Editor. This is my favorite light out of all the lights to work with because you can do so much with these types of lights. I mean, you can make them move around, you can change them colors, you can do a whole bunch of shit with just having the one solitary singular light there, and it's very easy to understand as well. <coughs> now, these are the only lights in Hammer Editor by default that have a parent option, which means that we can set a movement hierarchy with these parents, which is very fucking fantastic when we have like spotlights, anything that's moving that we want to have a light connected to. Now also in this episode, we're going to go over the new aspects that we see in the property tab of the light dynamic, and I'm going to show you a myriad of in-game examples of what it looks like when you mess with some of those, uh, those inputs, those outputs, the appearances, and whatnot. And then with all my previous tutorials, like I said, any links mentioned in this video can be found in the description below. And if you're new to Hammer Editor or you're still attempting to get the hang of Hammer Editor in the 2018 year, go ahead and check out my previous set of tutorials where I actually explain how to open Hammer Editor, how to start building a world, and how to just start getting shit done. So that's going to be one of the things that I would highly recommend you check out there is, uh, is some of my previous tutorials. If you're an intermediate Hammer Editor, I would still recommend taking a look at the, the Valve Developer Wiki page for more information on the light dynamic that we're working with today because there's going to be a couple of things that I actually don't know about the light dynamic because I just haven't played with it too much, unfortunately. So if you need an answer for some of those things, I'll point you in the direction. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on in. And remember, for the purpose of this set of tutorials, we're going to be working with Day of Defeat Sources Hammer Editor. However, all the knowledge that you learn in this set of videos, you can use in any version of Hammer Editor or any source game editor that has these entities that we're working with here. So what we're going to start off with is we're going to start off making sure that we're in our level, that we're in Hammer Editor, that we've got everything open, and that we've got our entity out. So we're going to click the entity, put an entity into the level, Double click the entity itself, go to the class, type in light underscore dynamic, click apply, and that's going to bring up our light dynamic here. The light dynamic is a point entity that's available in all the source games. It's an invisible light source that can also change over time. It can be turned on and off through inputs and outputs. It can also aim at any job, uh, any, uh, blah, can also aim at any object, including moving ones. Now, dynamic lights are calculated in real time, which means that they have a higher processing cost, but are much more flexible than static lighting. It's also the only entity, except for the env underscore projected texture entity, that can actually light up brushes in real time, but it actually doesn't replace the lighting there. We'll get into that, and once you start playing around with some of those textures, you'll actually know what I'm talking about. Now, there's a couple of things to note before we even start talking about the light underscore dynamic here. Um, one of the things to note is that this light is actually two lights. It consists of two different light models. We've got a cone model light and then a spot world model for the light. Now, some of the values that you change in the properties tab might affect one of those models, but they might not affect the other one. And then for the light to work properly, the distance key value must be greater than the distance from the entity to the surface it's supposed to light. Otherwise, it just won't show up. Meaning, if you have an object that's 50 meters away and this light says that the maximum distance that it's allowed to cast is 50 meters, that object is actually not going to get lit up. You would have to set the light cast to at least 51 meters. I highly recommend doing it to like 60 if it's 50 meters away, etc. But you get the idea there. Also, the brightness key value should be either 6 or 8. And by brightness key value, it means the light brightness here. Now, I've played around with this. I've made the light brightness value different values other than 6 and 8, and it still seems to work. However, 6 and 8 provide the most realistic and best-looking lights for those values. Normal brightness values do not apply. And by the normal brightness values, we mean in the color option. So when you go to the light color or light brightness, you'll see this very last number that says 200. That number actually doesn't apply in this specific case. Finally, the very last thing to note, highly, highly note, is the pitch, yaw, and roll of this object. You'll notice when you place the entity down in-game, it looks like it's 
facing the right directions that it should be, but it's actually completely opposite. If you render this, this light's not going to show up onto the ground. It's actually going to show onto the ceiling if it can touch that far, which mine will not. But that's what will happen if you render that. So to change that, you would go to the yeah the yaw pitch and roll here and go to angles and type down or select down. And it will change those matching angles to down. Now, if you want it to point at an, at an object, you will have to manually change these numbers with the point at as well as the pitch. So if you change the point at to something different, you will also have to play around with the pitch. However, I usually just keep mine in a static down position, so that's what I would also recommend. And then also, a very big note as well, for anybody using the 2013 Source SDK version, that's like Day of Defeat Source, Counter-Strike Source, Team Fortress 2, anything along those lines, you're going to have a maximum of 17 lights for the dynamic light. So you can only have a maximum of 17 of these bad boys in a level at any time. So definitely use wisely. All right, now that I've explained the need to knows here on the dynamic light, let's go ahead and just go over each category respectively. Now, obviously, with most of our entities in Source and Hammer Editors, we can give this object a name. For the purpose of this tutorial, I will name this object, and we're going to name it Tutorial Light 1. Caps Locks is on, but that's okay. So we're going to name our Tutorial Light 1. Now, for the second category here, we see Apparent. Now, what Apparent means is that you can tell this object that it's going to have to move with another object. So for the end of this tutorial, I will actually parent this object to a moving door and show you guys exactly what that looks like in game. For right now, we're just going to leave that blank though. Then we have the pitch yaw roll, which I've explained. That's also just the direction that that entity points at, of course. The entity to point at, you can select an entity specifically for this light to point at. However, you would have to manually change the pitch as well as some of the angles here on the pitch yaw roll because they will not change with that point at option. Next, we've got the light color option. This is much like our brightness and brightness HDR options in the other lights that we have here. However, on this one, uh, we only have the brightness option for the actual color of the light. Not, or I'm sorry, we only have the color option for the actual color of the light. We don't have a brightness option in this specific category. Like I said, that last number, that 200, doesn't do anything. But any time that you were to change any of these numbers, make sure to keep that number at 200 just for safekeeping. Light brightness, Valve Wiki recommends this number be between 6 and 8, so for the purpose of this tutorial, I will show 6. However, 0 does absolutely nothing, I will tell you that for sure for right now. The inner and outer angle, these ones are a little bit tricky to get the hang of, but once you do get the hang of it, it is so fucking easy. So you've got the inner angle, that's going to be the maximum amount of brightness that this angle is allowed to cast to. For this, it's 30. And then we've got the angle for the outer, and that's the fading angle. So that's how bright to dim it gets on the outside. The default values are 30 for the inner angle, and 45 for the fading angle. Now if you were to change these default values from 30 to 0 and from 45 to 0, this light would then become an omnidirectional light instead of a spotlight which is still useful in some cases because you can still move the right light around and have it parented to objects. However, not recommended. Pitch, we've already gone over that, of course. Our maximum distance and spotlight end radius. So the spotlight end radius is how big the circle is going to end up on whatever object it's showing on. And then the maximum distance that it's allowed to cast is the maximum area that the spotlight itself is allowed to hit. So you'll see this circle in three-dimensional and two-dimensional modes. That's going to be this maximum distance. So if we change this maximum distance to 240, let's say, anything within this circle that is in this spotlight radius will illuminate the spotlight. So if the spotlight were facing this direction to the left, anything within the left direction of that spotlight will be illuminated by the spotlight only. It does not mean that the whole area is illuminated. That just means that wherever the spotlight is casting is going to be illuminated in this area. For the purpose of this tutorial, I will leave this number at 120. 120. Why can I not type a 0? There we go. All right. And then we've got appearance as our very final property. And this one's very self-explanatory. This just changes the in-game appearance from the normal cast to any other cast that you would like. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'll leave that normal. Then we've got our flags tab. In our flags tab, I don't mess around with the flags in the dynamic lights a lot because the dynamic lights already cost so much performance to run. So, the only things that I have ever fucked with were do not light models and do not light world. 
the add and subtract displacement alpha, I don't know what they do because I don't use dynamic lights in maps that have displacement alpha, or at least not in those areas that have that. So I'm not exactly sure as to what those do. But if you are sure as to what those do, definitely leave a comment and let me know. It would be, it'd be helpful to, to, to know. But the Do Not Light models can be useful. I just don't recommend it, as well as the Do Not Light World. The Do Not Light World, I don't think it is useful at all. It does cost for better performance. However, I like to have objects in my world lit up, so I like to have the models as well as the world lit up. And that's going to do it for the light dynamic here. Now, like I said with the start of this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and tie this light dynamic to a certain entity, or to the door here and make it move in the hierarchy with the door, which means that when the door moves to the left, this light is also going to move to the left with the door. Then on top of that, like I said in my previous tutorial, in each tutorial I will show you a new and unique way to tie your lights to entities in the world to be toggled on or off by those entities, and to change different aspects of the properties and inputs and outputs of the values of those lights. So let's go ahead and get started. We've got our light here, our light dynamic that we made, the tutorial light underscore one. Everything's all set up the way that we want it to, so that's good. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a door. I've already set my door up, but all you need to do is create a brush entity. Select every part of that brush entity that you want to have moving and be the door. Hold Control and T to tie it to an entity. The default is Funk Detail. We will go to the class and type in Funk underscore door. Select Apply. For the purpose of this tutorial, I will name this door Tutorial Door 1. It will not have a parent, it will actually be the parent. And then for the lip, uh, actually for everything, I'm just going to go ahead and keep this generic. Select Apply and just scoot up right on over to the flags. I'm going to unclick Touch Opens, and for the purpose of this tutorial, I will do Use Opens. And hit Apply. Select Apply again, just to make sure that we've got everything toggled in there. And then because this door is not going to move very far to the right direction, because that's the direction that it's going to move in, I'm going to take this little button here and move it all the way to the right. That's just going to tell this door to move a little bit further. Now to make this door the parent to this light. All you have to do is go into the light, properties, select parent. There's a dropper right here on the right. Go into your three-dimensional mode and just click the door. It should auto-put the door's name there and select apply. Now, if you don't want to use a dropper, you can always just type in the name or even use the drop-down menu on the top right side. But that's the easiest, fastest way. So, ba bam Now this light is effectively tied to this door. Whenever this door moves, this light will move. Now, not only that, but here's the portion where we tie the light to a uh, trigger zone, is what we're going to do in this tutorial. And what a trigger zone is, is essentially whenever you walk into or out of this area, it's going to do something effective in-game. For the purpose of this tutorial, it will actually turn this light on or off. So whenever we're in the area, this light will be on. And whenever we're out of the area, the light will turn off. So, going to create my trigger texture here. To do that, we just create a block in the world wherever you want to have uh, the area at. And like I said, for mine, I'm going to have to stay in the area the entire time. So I'll light up the whole area with this block from top to bottom ceiling. And then I will hold Control T to tie it to an entity. Go to the class here and then type in trigger underscore multiple. Select apply, and that just means that if multiple people, people are in this area, it'll trigger multiple of those outputs if you have any outputs set. The only thing we're going to worry about in this area is the delay before reset. We're just going to change it to 0.5, one half second, and then we'll scoot right on over to the flags area. Make sure that clients is checked. You can check NPCs if you would like bots to activate this area as well as pushables and physics objects. For the purpose of this tutorial, I will click pushables and physics objects to show you what I mean. Now we'll go back to the outputs tab, and we're going to set it up to where once we're in the area, it turns the light on, and once we leave the area, it will turn the light off. So we'll go down to the bottom and select add. Then what we'll do on on start touch, that means whenever the entity goes into the, uh, the area here, we will do tutorial light one, turn on. Now, we will do on end touch all. That means when absolutely nothing is in the area here whatsoever, we will do our tutorial light one, turn off. Oh, that's a tank light. I don't know why that one came up. But we will do our tutorial light one, and then scroll all the way down to turn off via this input. 
So then my output name would be the end touched all whenever it's done touching. The target entity would be our light. So whenever we're done touching this area, our light via this input would turn off. It's exactly what those means. And flags are super fucking easy to get the hang of once you start getting the flags down. But we'll just double click apply and ba bam. So whenever we're in the area, this light will turn on. And whenever we're out of the area, the light will turn off. And with this light here, it will shine a light down on the floor here. And if we were to open the door, quote unquote, the door, this light will move in direction with the door. So let me go ahead and render that in game, show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. And we will be right back. Let me see if I can do some magic here. One, two, three. There we go. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Draw me right in game. Magic, just like that. So this is my tutorial map here. This is the light dynamic tutorial map that I've got set up. This is just some of the examples, like I said, that we've had in game. Um, so I'll just go as quick as I can from left to right to kind of to kind of go over this here. We've got our default light dynamic, and these are all shining at the ground too. I actually I only had to change the pitch setting in most of these here. So when I say default, the only setting that's changed is that point up or down setting, that that pitch yaw roll setting. So this is our default. This is with a 5 brightness. This is a default as well. This is also with 5 brightness, just a little bit closer to the ground. And then on top of that, we've changed the cone as well as the brightness here. So the brightness level increases drastically as well as the cone level itself. And the reason why it's doing this is this is HDR rendering. So the rendering that we're currently in right now is HDR. The rendering in the upper right hand corner is going to be LDR. This is a green light, of course, just regular standard green light. It's changed with the color option. This is a, a light that has its outer and inner cone changed, but not the brightness changed. So as you can see, it doesn't affect my gun too, too much, but the outer and inner brightness look very good on that one. These are my two favorite light examples here of all time. This light example has a point underscore spotlight light with it. So it definitely has a, a nice little glare, and whenever I move under the light, it looks like a real fucking light. In comparison to this one, though, where this one does not have that nice little glare. And the best part about this is this is an object that is parented, and the parent is actually this hanging rope. So it's on a pulley system, and whenever I shoot this object, as you can see, it has the most realistic looking spinning fucking light of all time. This is like my absolute favorite fucking thing that we have in this map. That I have in this map. I don't know why I keep saying we. Um, and then the button here just toggles this light on and off. And then I've got the same thing with this light, except I've got a red light that turns it on and off. And then here's our light. So right now, there's no uh, initially dark setting for this light, so it's going to be on until we go into the zone and then come out of it. And obviously, as you can see, that light goes on and off. Here's in the zone, past the wall, out of the zone, in the zone, out of the zone. Now, since we're in here, going ahead and show you exactly what I mean by that moving object here. But bam. So whenever we hit the door, the door moves and it takes this, this light with it. And this is the best part about the light dynamic is that you're able to do stuff like this, is that the light is able to be parented and moved, whereas most of the other lights in Source Editor do not have that ability. They do not have this option to where you can you can hang it from a ceiling and make it look like a legitimate fucking light. Like, that's, it's just, it, it astounds me that some of the, the games don't have shit like this, or more maps don't have shit like this. But, that's our tutorial here, guys. Here's our area again, just one more time. Just, ba-bam. It's going to move back here in just a moment. Ba-bam. It moved right on top of me, and that's because of this door. But that is our light dynamic tutorial. It was a little bit longer here. I just wanted to explain exactly how some of these things are, are working and how some of these things work out, what they look like in-game. Um, if you would like a tutorial on this hanging light fixture here, I'll definitely post a tutorial on the hanging light fixture. Keep a lookout in the description or on the right side of the screen for that. However... If you don't see that right now, it will be up soon because it's very simple, very easy. I love hanging light fixtures. They look fucking beautiful. I mean, look at that. And obviously, as you can tell, it's it's not perfect, but it's as perfect as it can be for being, you know, source. However, 
This has been the second installment of our lighting tutorials here. This is Opti. This is Opti's lighting tutorial map. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If any of this information was helpful at all whatsoever, please drop a like, a subscribe. Once you subscribe, hit that bell button so you're notified of all my new shit that I'm coming out with. And leave a comment. We will be back. Join us on the next episode. Thank you so much. Opti out.